if you have ever spent time in a kindergarten or first grade classroom or even a second or third grade classroom then you know that kids cannot sit still so personally i figure if you can't beat them join them so in my elementary music room we do a ton of movement activities across every grade but especially with those littles because one they can't sit still two it helps them focus and three it has been proven over and over and over again that movement is so good for kids it gets them up it gets their blood moving gets their brain ready it is better for their focus it's better for their being and especially in teaching there's a lot of students who will understand things better if they can kind of feel them and if they can do them in an active way instead of just sitting and staring and being bored so in this video we're going to talk all about kindergarten and first grade movement activities they could probably be done with older kids as well but specifically for kindergarten and first grade and most of them are like activities so maybe not necessarily like music lessons but kind of like warm ups end of class in the middle to kind of like get the body moving and it definitely does not cover everything because again we do a lot of movement and so i would love to be able to tell you all the things that we do but that would take forever so instead you should go check out my playlist called what i'm teaching this week where i literally talk about literally every single lesson that i teach my kiddos i do like a month at a time for each grade so i have like first grade april and it's everything i teach in april so that's a really good way to see kind of like in action in action how i teach and exactly like where i lay everything out but in the meantime, you can check out this video and see all the movements. I would also love to know your favorite movement activities down in the comments, so be sure to leave them there or come hang out with me over on Instagram at Becca's Music Room and you can tell me your favorite movement activities over there. Send me a DM or just comment on a picture and let me know what you love because I'm always looking for new ones as well. Without further ado, let's hop right on in. All right, number one is gonna be Hickory Dickory Dock. This is a really cute nursery rhyme that my kiddos love. I've also shared this with our second grade teachers and I made like a video to give them and they did this when they were teaching about time. Um, but it's super cute and there are actions that go along with it. So for this one, we keep it pretty simple. We keep the steady beat and we go Hickory Dickory Dock. The mouse ran up the clock. The clock struck one, the mouse ran down, hickory dickory duck. And then the clock strikes two, and then three. And we go all the way around, and usually I have the kids pick what time it's gonna be to make it a little bit more fun. And it keeps them entertained for like a weird amount of time. So I actually have a free hickory dickory duck resource that I will leave a link below. I have a ton of freebies, by the way. I don't know why, but I have a lot of freebies that I'm mentioning in this block in this video so definitely go and check out the freebie down below all right number two is ballet of the unhatched chicks form so i love teaching form it's a really easy way to do movement it's a really easy way to get kids listening to especially classical music and ballet of the unhatched chicks by modest musorski is one of my favorites it's super cute the form is a a b a that by the way is the sign language letters i always do that first before we do anything else and there are so many different things that you can do with this but i like to use their hand Hands. so what we do is you have a and b and you put them behind your back and so when it's a a comes out and it's the first little chicken he goes around he goes back he comes back out because it's a a <laughs> dances all around goes back and then b comes out and moves b goes back and a comes out you can also do this with like little cutouts i've done that with um like chickens in different colors or you do like a different animal and that allows them to have a second way to do that you can also add in different things so for example you could have the kids pretend to move around like chickens on the a section and freeze on the b section you could even have one kid chosen to move around in the b section they're the only one who gets to move and everyone else is frozen that's really fun and it can make this take a really long time because they all want to be it and so it, you have to keep doing it over and over and over um but lots of fun and really simple way to teach form again and that's a good way you can kind of start with here's the letters and then move to hands behind your back and then move to moving you can even have them move in their seat so they're not moving around because you know six feet and also because i like to do everything stationary before we move around the classroom um because it just makes life a lot easier um and you can also add the parachute to this so this is a really simple way to use the parachute um we just do like little waves on the a section and then on the b section you can either have them walk around in a circle or you can just have them freeze and so really easy way again to just see that form and it's super quick super easy tastes like no prep if you do not have a parachute by the way i'll link one down below they are like game changers they are amazing you need one three number three we're actually doing this one in class right now and it is one two buckle my 
shoes. So this is a really easy nursery rhyme. Again, I'll just kind of act out what we're doing. So we just do the numbers and then act it out. It's very simple. So it just goes one, two, buckle my shoe. Three, four, shut the door. Five, six, pick up sticks. Seven, eight, laid them straight. Nine, ten, a big fat head. This one entertains them for quite a long time and I also have a freebie that I will leave linked down below. All right, next up is scarves. So I love using scarves in my elementary music classroom. We use them all the time. The simplest way to use scarves, especially with little kids, is to have them either show the music or respond to contrast. So specifically, we often do high and low and like use the scarves to show the contour of a piece. A great one for that is O Mio Babino Caro because it's very dramatic with O Mio Babino Caro. And if you're familiar, it has that like um, octave jump so it's like down way up and then it comes back down. Super dramatic, super fun, the kids love it. So O Mio Babino Caro is a great one for that. Um, I also like Bidlo is a good one for if you're doing um, forte and piano. And so I have the kids move small when it's piano and then big when it's forte. If you wanna have them just like show the music, a good one would be Aquarium from Carnival of the Animals by Camille Saison. And so that one is very obvious, like it feels like it's moving around in circles or it feels like it's going up and down. And so it's really easy for the kids to just show you what the music is doing. If you want something more structured, you could again go with form and you can pick pretty much any song that has a distinct form and assign actions to it. One of my favorites is um, to do the song Le Torreador from Carmen. I love Carmen. I love this piece. It is so much fun. We have a whole thing for the upper grades that I will leave down below that you can see like how I use that. I have like four different ways that I use it with the older kids. But the younger kids, we will often do this scarf routine. And so for the pattern is A, A, B, A, C, A. And so for this on the A section, we march with the scarf in our hands. When it comes back the second time, I tell them to move their scarf up and down like a baton at the beginning of like a marching band. The person, I don't, I don't know what that's called actually because I didn't do marching band. Um, choir kid. Um, anyway, and then on the B section, we move the scarves um, back and forth above our heads for eight beats and then down for eight beats. Okay, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Um, and we go back and forth and there's a lot of trills on, I think it's a piccolo playing the trills. And so for that, you can just do like, <laughs> so the kids can kind of get a feel for that. On this C section, we're doing um, infinity sign, so I tell them a sideways H, and we start really, really low, and you'll hear it does kind of like four different sections, so it gets a little bit louder, and a little bit louder, and a little bit louder, so we start all the way down at our feet with our figure eights, and then when it gets a little bit louder, we come up until we're all the way up at the top, and then it goes straight back into a march at the end with the A section. So, highly recommend, I will leave a blog post down below that you can like see that again, and see it like laid out in words, so it makes a little more more sense but that's kind of the gist of it. it is super fun highly recommend highly recommend anything with scarves i talk about scarves a lot if you haven't gotten the, if you haven't figured that out yet so definitely always a hit all right next one is where the wild things are so i bought the book where the wild things are a an embarrassingly long time ago maybe two three it's been a long time because i was like oh i would love to use this in music and then i couldn't think of a way to use it in music until now so i finally sat down and actually thought about like what we could do and i came up with a whole set of lessons so i'll leave that link down below we are going over rhythm in that one so you can check that out but specifically in there along with all the rhythm activities is a movement activity so this is a free video on youtube i will link it below as well there's gonna be a lot of links i will try to get them all but basically the kids just watch the video and it tells them what to do and so there's just all these different things that are inspired by where the wild things are so some of the things include like show your claws or sailing away like Max says at the end of the book or just different things like that so that you can kind of like get that wild things idea that wild things theme along with it even though it's it's not like from the book so very much inspired by the book but not actually from the book and again, that's a really easy, you can just like pop it up on the board and the kids can do it and it's super, super easy and lots of fun. All right, the next one is a song and this is called Walk and Stop. I love this song, we use it a lot and specifically we use it at the beginning of the year because it's really easy to get kids to follow directions. Well, you walk and you walk and you walk and you stop. You walk and you walk and you walk and you stop. You walk and you walk and you walk and you stop. You walk and you walk and you walk and you stop. 
And then we change it to different things. So we do, you know, we might do, well, you hop and you hop and you hop and you stop, or we might snap, or we might pat, or we might stomp, or we might jump, or we might hop. Whatever gets the wiggles out. This is one of my favorite go-tos, and you can have the kids pick what actions we're gonna add to it, and it's just tons of fun. You can have it locomotor, move it around the classroom, or you can have them just stay in their seats. Either way, tons of fun, highly recommend. The next one is we're going on a bear hunt. So if you are not familiar with this one, it is a, it's a song and it's also a book. I believe, I did some research and I think the song came first, but it's hard to tell honestly. But basically you're going hunting bears and you come up to all these different obstacles. So I'll leave a link to the video of the guy who wrote the book, um, doing like acting it all out for you if you don't want to lead it, but also you can do it yourself. And so what we do is we keep the study beat and it's a repeat after me song. So they just echo back to you. So we do, um, we're going on a bear hunt. We're gonna catch a big one. What a beautiful day. I'm not scared. And then you come up to all these different things. So we always do the tree. So um, like one of them is the tree. So we might do, we're coming to a tree. We're coming to a tree. A big tall tree. A big tall tree. Can't go under it. Can't go around it. To go over it. And we go through all these different things. So we go through like the mushroom patch, we go through the river, and we go over the bridge, we go through all these different things. Um, and it's also a really good warm up because it gets their voices like doing all sorts of funky things. It's super cute, super fun. The kids always love it. And you can make it even more fun by going around the room. So I've done this before where I'll set up um different areas. So I might put like some blue fabric down to be the river that we swim through or you might put like um little like rocks paper down it that they have to go through or um i'll make like a tunnel that they have like underneath the tables and just all these different things and have them kind of go like in a line and going through all these different things and it is so so much fun. This is included with Hickory Dickory Dock and a bunch of other things like Grizzly Bear, Mouse Nazi, and different mouse and bear things in my virtual field trip to the forest. So I will leave that link down below. It's all about piano and forte. And so we're using the bears and the mice to teach piano and forte. And it has lots of different songs and stuff. So definitely check that out down below. All right, next up is London Bridge. Now I know you're probably like, Becca, seriously, you're adding London Bridge on here. But London Bridge is such a good one that kids these days don't know. Seriously, I know because I teach children's church in addition to teaching music. And in children's church the other day, we were doing some lesson. I don't even remember what we were talking about, but it was something where I was like, oh my gosh, we could play like a variation of London Bridge and then that would work perfectly because they were going under Maybe it was the Red Sea, part of the Red Sea. I don't know. Anyway, and so we were going to do London Bridge and I was like, who's played London Bridge? And they were all like... And I mean, like, first through fifth graders, I was like you've never played london bridge before so we played so i was like all right well first of all we gotta play the normal london bridge so we played the normal london bridge and they were like this is so much fun even like the 10 year olds and i was like yes it is and then we also played it and however i connected it to the bible story which i now don't remember anymore but the point being it is so much fun and it's highly underrated so if you don't know the song london bridge it goes London Bridge is falling down, falling down, falling down. London Bridge is falling down, my fair lady. And there's tons of different verses, but the other one that we do, so we do that one and we do a second one, which is shake them up with pepper and salt. So it's shake them up with pepper and salt, pepper and salt, pepper and salt, shake them up with pepper and salt, my fair lady. And so what we do is the kids walk around in a circle. I usually have them walk on the edge of the carpet so that it's easy to get there. You and another student hold hands to make the bridge. Whenever the song stops, whoever's standing under the bridge gets caught under the bridge. And then we do shake them up with pepper and salt. And so we'll like, you know, shake our arms back and forth. And that's why I always want to be in the bridge to make sure that the kid is, you know, safe. Cause I can make sure that we give them plenty of room when they get caught underneath the bridge and stuff like that. So I just always do myself and then another kid. And usually if you have a kid that's, um, often causes trouble in class that's a great one to pick because you can keep an eye on them and they feel special so that also helps to kind of fill that up super fun my kids love 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 london bridge and it's super simple you can play it if you're in their classroom you can play if you just got like an extra five minutes of time so much fun so much fun 
they love it it's so great now a not so common song is the next one and that is tiktok i found this on youtube or on the internet somewhere and it was like i had never seen it anywhere else and i can't even find the place that i originally found it so all of that to say it is still so much fun but it's not super common so this one goes tick tock tick tock goes a little clock night and day it just goes tick tock open wide the doors of the little clock so we do this in partners and so one person is the clock and then the other person does all the action so they stand still the other person walks around in a circle around them. So they do tick tock, tick tock goes the little clock. Night and day, it just goes tick tock. And then when it says open wide, they stand behind the clock and they open wide by pulling the kid's arm, not hard, but you know, just pulling them up like this. And then the kid behind pops out when you say cuckoo, like cuckoo, cuckoo. Just like if you've ever seen The Sound of Music like that um, at the end when they're singing the so long for a while song and they do that um so they just pop out from each side so this is super super fun it does get a little bit difficult to get those so i like to start it in place first so for that i just have the kids walk they open their own arms and then they go to the sides for cuckoo so it's pretty much the same thing but without the partner and then we add the partner and they already kind of know it and they know the song and all of that good stuff so little hack for you i always start everything in place first before we add moving around the classroom it just makes things much more calm <laughs> um so super super fun really cute i have a whole blog post about it so you can click the link down below to learn more about how i teach like a whole song all right the next one is super 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 simple and i call this tiptoe and stop basically i just play a drum and the kids respond to the changes of the dynamics in the drum by playing either by either tiptoeing or stopping so if i'm playing a piano they tiptoe if i'm playing forte then they stop and i usually do this in groups of eight so they can kind of get like that feeling of um groups of beats and then i'll get faster and i'll get slower and change things up to make it a little bit more fun super simple really great warm up and again i love this at the beginning of the year because it's so easy all right and that is the last one for today i would love to know any of your favorite ones down below and if you wanted more information i will link the coordinating blog post down below as well as all of the different things that i talked about so thank you guys so much for watching and i will see you next time Bye.